Hi, and welcome to Writer to Writer. I'm your host, Dee Davenport, and we're talking with a real writing family here, Mr. David Poyer, Lenore Hart, and their daughter, Naya. Thanks for joining us. It must be difficult, interesting, weird to be in a family where both of y'all are published authors and still have to run a household. How do you all, deal with all it? All of the above. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. I would go for the weird part. Do yeah. you have any, any difficulties? Do you have a, a hard time finding time to be alone? Well, um, yeah, sometimes. It's, I mean, like most parents, we don't have get much time alone anyway. But yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a problem sometimes when we're working. Uh, we do work at home, and our offices are lofts, so they're open, and, and, you know, and we hear a lot of in the sounds. Same, are you in the same room when you we're, work? No, we're, it's kind of an L-shaped, and there's a, there's a bathroom in between. I've got a, a loft here, and his is over on the side. We can kind of see each other across. The shouting space. distance, yeah, within shouting distance, yeah, and um, I think it takes some getting used to. Just working at home takes some getting used to anyway, and then working—it's almost like being in a business partnership together. I Absolutely. guess you say I, it's, it's probably some of the same stresses. I would think. And of course, people will know you by your pseudonym Elizabeth Graves, mm -hmm. and you've written Black River and Weirwood, and also Mr. David Poyer has written The Med, The Gulf, Louisiana Blue, and The Only Thing to Fear. What kind of difficulties do you encounter working at home? Do you sometimes wish that you had like a lifetime membership at a hotel where you could kind of take off, check in, and not have to worry? about poor little Naya there, although she's being very quiet now. I imagine that uh, she could be a little she's bit loud if she quiet had to. <laughs> no, I, I never feel like I want to uh, go elsewhere and work, Dee. Uh, I have a little of the advantage on Lenore in that uh, I've been, been a writer for roughly 10 years longer, so I'm kind of adapted to working alone and, uh, and trying to concentrate uh, where where She's, um, you know, come more recently to the profession and is trying right. to learn a lot of things at once, you know, in a, in a short learning period. So I, I can see why that would add more stress. I imagine since your books have kind of a common, a common thread with the, the water and diving and, and military type things, it's easier to kind of sink back into that rather than have to worry about creating things that are new to you. Well, perhaps so. Um, the later books, like The Only Thing to Fear, uh, have, have been pretty research intensive. Some of the research has to take place outside the home. I, I do a lot of library work. I do some travel. I, I did travel to the Morgan City area in Louisiana for Louisiana Blue. Um, but we have to support each other in that, too, because Lenore's books are primarily, the Elizabeth Graves books are set in North Florida. So she does travel to North Florida, the Orlando, Jacksonville, Tallahassee, Gainesville area. And we just have to be very flexible and spend a lot of time on the road together. Yeah, it does require a certain amount of that. I mean, his, his are more, especially more, more uh, research intensive for technical details. Mine aren't really technical, but I still need uh, a certain amount of research for, to get that sense of place, you know, the background, sure. you know, what it would be like, what it would sound like and look like, and, you know, to make sure it seems authentic. How, how long have you all been separated at a stretch? I understand for the, uh, the only thing to fear, you had to go overseas. It's a World War II type of book, and you had to do some research there. Well, certainly I, I didn't do any overseas research on that book, um, but I have had to do some travel and interviewing people. What's the longest? A couple of weeks, I guess. Or, it must be I tough. Guess so. you know, Maybe, time, but, yeah. but it's kind of frequent, though, I guess, is that, you know, it's... We travel a lot, and we sometimes have to do it as a family. And you know, we take business trips, and it's all of us. And it's you know, it, it's often it's a, it's a couple of weeks at a time, so that does get kind of wearing sometimes. So we have to be adaptable. And you know, if this trip is two weeks long, we'll be in four places in two weeks. Do you ever get on each other's nerves when you all are on a hot streak at the no, same never. time? No, never. No, I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, well, yeah. I mean, you know, like anyone would. Um, yeah, we have to. I think that that's something you have to learn is, is working together. You have to be, you know, kind of get get over that. I think, and, and you know, try not to to think about it. It's like a it's like a writer's workshop at home, I guess. And and if you do writer's workshops, you know, with with groups of people, whether it's in college setting or whatever, you sort of learn to take criticism, you know, and, and try to use it for what it's worth, and you know, and ignore the things that you don't need to use. And and that's more complicated when the criticism criticism or suggestions are coming from someone that you're you know related to or you have a relationship with. Of course, there's additional stresses. So that's something you need to learn. I was going to ask. It must be so tough to take criticism from each other. You know, if if somebody were critiquing my work, especially when you have to live with that person, it seems like it'd be. It's rather difficult to take with a grain of salt. Do you find that it's to be true? It's not difficult to take criticism from Lenore because the criticism is always so apposite. Uh, it's expressed so well, and it's always right on target. Not to say that I always 
you know, do exactly what she recommends. But when she points out a problem, I know there's a problem there. And when she points out a slow part, I know it's a slow part. And when she points out somewhere where I'm being too technical, I know I have to fix it. So basically, that's based. The reason I don't have any resentment is because it's based on respect for her ability and her editing ability. And I try to phrase it with humor, too, so I'm yeah. chuckling that's occasionally. <laughs> Very few of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you bounce ideas, uh, potential stories, potential novels off each other? Honey, what do you think about doing this? We know? do that in the car sometimes when we're traveling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've yeah. come up with lots of books we may never write, but we've come up with great ideas while we're traveling. You get bored, mm -hmm. That's you know. That's the best way. We've come up with joint novels like, uh, let's do an undersea diving horror novel. Let's do a Navy horror novel. What do you I like it. <laughs> Didn't they do that we with may the never, but yeah. 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 Well, you know, you know, that's probably where that came from. We, you know, we, we try to, con you know, think how can we combine this? And we probably, well, we may or may not ever do that, but it's fun to come up with the ideas anyway. So we do that, and sometimes. Uh, if we're stuck, you know, in something we're working on, the other person is, has, will come up with a solution. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that's half the fun. So it's really great. Well, yeah. that's kind of a neat thing. Are you all going to ever do a collaboration maybe in the future? A, a naval horror kind of maybe. thing? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. It's possible, I guess. Uh, right now, he's got so many deadlines, and, I, you know, it's probably not in the near future, but it's someday, perhaps. Yeah. I've always heard the old adage, little topic shift here, that you should write about what you know about, and that seems to be what you've done. What is your background, and tell us what you're currently writing, what you're currently working on? Well, my background is, of course, Naval Academy, Navy, uh, some postgraduate education, marine engineering, and a good deal of sailing and diving and things like that. And, uh, and then, starting about 16 years ago, writing not full time, but as, as often as I could uh, find time to write uh, in the evenings and uh, part time. And then about six to seven years ago, I was able to achieve enough success to go full time with it. So, so my early work uh, drew on my experiences and my later work, see I do three series of books. One is the Navy right. novels, which is the Med, the Gulf, the Circle, and the Passage so far. Uh, the second the series is set in western Pennsylvania where I grew up, The Dead of Winter, Winter in the Heart, and As the Wolf Loves Winter are the three books published to date. Um, the third series is a diving, uh, diving adventure series, and that's um, Hatteras Blue, Bahamas Blue, Louisiana Blue, and um, a work which is so far untitled. So you see some of those are research intensive and some of them are pretty much uh, drawing on my own background. It seems with the ecologically bent novels, such as Louisiana Blue, then that would have required a lot of research to go that out. Create, that, that requires some research, yes. It's like now, right now you're researching wolves. Wolves, for, yeah. a, for a new book. Wolves. We don't know a lot about wolves. Well, we actually, we know quite a lot about wolves now, or yeah. <laughs> more than we ever thought we would know. <laughs> well, I think that'd be part of the interesting thing about writing, is that you'll, you'll learn something new each time. Mm -hmm. I think a writer has to know, uh, has, has to know, not so much know a great deal, but to know how to learn a great deal rapidly and to how express to cram, it. in other how words. To cram. All right. Very no, it's well. like we, we, I've compared it to like preparing, preparing for or writing a term paper every day of your life almost. Mm -hmm. you know. little thing. Yes. And she's picking up a lot of things being around the house. Her favorite word now is equilibrium. Oh, no. Are you serious? <laughs> oh, no. She also says cappuccino and pyrotechnics. Oh, and a child of the 90s. Brachiating. Brachiating. The monkeys brachiate. So yeah. you think the, the natural career choice might perhaps be, oh, taking a stab in the dark, an author? No, or, or, or writing a dictionary. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> she I seems bet. to like words, though, I guess. That's, she comes by that naturally. So tell us about your book, The Black River. Well, uh, it's set in North Florida. Um, it's, it's a horror novel, but I, I try to stay away from the real graphic stuff. I'm not, I'm not into the, the gore so much as I want to tell a good story. Um, I've always been interested in the supernatural, the unknown. I find that really fascinating, but I think that should be secondary to the story. So I've tried to create believable characters, take contemporary characters and put them in a setting that's isolated and has just enough of the old folklore and, and the, the old Florida about it that those sort of things could happen and it could still be a believable story. When you talk about old Florida, what are you referring to exactly? Pre-Disney World Florida, I guess. <laughs> Ooh. Well, you know, because a, a lot of places in Florida aren't like the tourist traps that people think it is. There really are rural places. Yeah, that... that's true. And, and mostly in North Florida, you'll, you'll see, I think that there's more places like that still in North Florida, which is one reason why I chose to, to set it there. Um, there's a lot of small towns, um, people who still remember stories about the old days, and uh, there are things like people who still practice herbal medicine, 
Um, Herbal medicine? Little, little uh, yeah, back when, when there weren't that many doctors, you know, within driving distance, there's usually someone around who, who would, you know, knew about herbs, could, could perform minor cures with things like that, and became kind of respected in the community as uh, like not a doctor, but a sort of a healing type of person. Voodoo, sort of. Sort of like, yeah, but m mostly the, the, the beneficial kind, you know, although in, in the book it, turn, it starts to turn the other way. Uh, I've always been interested in that, in folklore, in um, oral histories, um, and in traditional things, because they're so rapidly disappearing. And I wanted to preserve a little bit of that in the book, too. Um, so that's why I chose to set it there rather than in Miami or somewhere like that. I, I take my main character and transplant her from Miami into that setting so that she's sort of like, you know, the fish out of water um, and sort of at a disadvantage and learning things all the time. And strange things happen to her. So at first she doesn't realize what's going on. And then it gradually dawns on her that something is amiss. How long did it take you to write that one? Um, I worked at it off and on. I, 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 my estimate is about two years since I was working at it off and on, working in, uh, in going to school to part of that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about you? How I, I didn't it? write that book. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you write your Pick a novels, book, any typically, book. like what's the longest one? And uh, The longest one to date is uh, The Passage, and that took about a year and a half. And those are, those are big books. Those are big. Those are uh, 200,000 words plus. And, uh, and they're highly technical and have, uh, have multiple characters. And for that one, I had to learn a great deal about Cuba, for example. One of the characters is a Cuban refugee. And um, that takes a long time to research, to find sources, to check things, to write, to vet, uh, to rewrite. Both Lenore and I rewrite innumerable times. Wow. We're real believers in polishing and polishing. Well, is that at the editor's request or at your own kind of urging to make it better? Uh, well, it's, it's initially, it's our own. I mean, that's, you know, we feel like we want to send out the best possible um, product. You know, like anybody, I, I mean, I keep referring to it to business, but anybody in the business would want to put forth the best possible product. And uh, writers need to think that way, too. I get they probably all don't. I mean, you know, it's the same with any business. But I think it's important to put out the best you possibly can. Uh, you know, I think that's just, I think it, it goes for writers as well as anyone else. It must be tough, though, when you've created something that has so many words in it, so many layers and so many sections, to have to kind of become a surgeon and excise that with a scalpel and kind of toss it out. It is hard, especially after looking at it a long time. It, it, at certain points, it's hard. You can't tell whether it's good. Is this good? Is this bad? That's where it, it's, it's handy to have another writer next door to say, you know, read this. Is this, is this terrible? Is it just me or is this terrible? I can't tell anymore. Is so it tough is for you handy. to slip into to, to your wife's work? I mean, it's so much different than yours. Is it easy for you to get in there and read it and then see immediately if something does need to be adjusted or fixed? Well, after, after having read her work, uh, I don't really think that the genre makes a difference as far as good writing goes. Uh, if you can criticize, uh, you, know, you can really criticize almost any form of work if you understand the mechanics of good writing. You know, whether it's uh, a horror novel or contemporary literature or a sea book, uh, you can tell if it's well written because it's got the attributes of vividness, velocity, verisimilitude. It's got sensory detail. Uh, it's got a good narrative pace. It's got a consistent point of view. Convincing characters. Yeah, convincing the characters. <laughs> That's what I call them. The ten yeah. Vs or whatever. Yeah. No, th these are all common to all good, all good forms of writing. Mm -hmm. That's why I said when I set out to write a horror novel, it wasn't you know just for special effects. I, I wanted to write a good story, and I, and I didn't believe that. Uh, the type of book should determine whether it would be good or bad, sure. you know, readable or not readable. I think you can tell a good story in any kind of fiction yes, and do it well and, and have quality, you know, good quality writing. I believe that. And, and I don't, something you said earlier about writing about what you know, I, I, yeah. that's true. That's very true. You but know I about think that you shouldn't Lenore? have to, well, <laughs> well I can do that. But I think if you don't know, I, I mean, I don't think you have to write about what you know. That would be very limiting, you know, in, you know, if you look at it in the long run, that would be limiting. But I think if you want to write about something that you don't know, you need to, you better find out about it and yeah. find out everything about it that you can. Oh, because you or know it somebody won't be out convincing. there. Exactly. Oh, yes, there's always someone out there waiting to tell you what you did wrong. Yeah, she's wrong. <laughs> and you'll hear about it, too. <laughs> They many write times. letters. They do. Oh, I'm sure. They sure do. Yeah. Has that ever happened to you in oh, your Oh, many books? times. Yes, Every book I get a flood of letters yeah. uh, telling me what I did wrong. And, uh, well, also you what know, I did right, but, but yes, too. Yes, true, true. You know, ma mainly they're positive, but uh, occasionally I do get letters pointing out what I did wrong, and it's always satisfying to me to be able to write back and say, no, you're wrong, and here's why, Ooh. and, you know. That's a good point. But I think it's also satisfying to know that people read that closely That's and that true. they pay. I mean, if they weren't interested and really absorbed in the book, I don't think they would even notice so much or they wouldn't bother mm -hmm. to persist. And, and occasionally they do. They do catch me.
So that but keeps very me occasionally. <laughs> well, I'm a perfectionist, and so is Lenore. And I think that's what has given I think us most success. Writers and, are, well, you know, I think to be most accomplished writers are. It, it definitely it's a trait that's helpful to have. Absolutely. It's frustrating but helpful. Yeah, somewhat neurotic. You know, about <laughs> yeah, it helps to be neurotic if you want to be a writer. <laughs> neurotic perfectionist, perfect. You can be a writer. Oh boy. <laughs> Tell us about the only thing to fear. Well, the only thing to fear is a. Uh, it's my first attempt at a historical thriller. It's set in 1945. And it's sort of the American day of the jackal, where um, where the target of the assassin is Franklin D. Roosevelt. Oh. And um, the people who are trying to protect him are a young naval reserve lieutenant just back from the Pacific. He has wounds sustained in action in the Pacific. His name is John F. Kennedy. And a, um, and a, a Hollywood actress named Lauren Wolf. Um, and I think these are all interesting characters and I think the plot of the book is going to going to give rise to some controversy as well. Really? Mm, I think so. Is it profitable to be a writer? I mean not everyone out there can be a, a Stephen King or a Tom Clancy and a lot of people a lot of people out there are writing and making a living at it you know getting contracts and, and things published but if they're not going to make that New York Times bestseller list is it, is it worthwhile financially? You said that up until six years ago that's mm -hmm. when you started to write full-time. Yes, you do have a hump to get over. There are easier ways to get rich. <laughs> <laughs> Play the lottery easier frequently. ways. Yeah, yeah, you almost have a better chance. Um, I think it's it's one of those professions that you have to really, really love. That you would you would be doing it, I think, regardless of whether you were making money at it or not. Um, and you can make a living at it, but it is very hard work and it takes a lot of discipline. Um, you know, like any self-employed type of job and there's a lot of competition I, I think it is a hard thing to make a living in but it can be done but you know if someone w is, is thinking in terms of you know oh, I'm gonna have a bestseller and I'm gonna be a millionaire right away you know they're gonna they're bound to be disappointed that that's rarely the case but I think it's you can certainly make a living what, well what do you what do you think? No, I think you're exactly right you have to be able to to put in um, a good a good many years at first I think learning your trade and not not making a living wage while you're learning the trade because no one's going to pay you uh, what you think you're worth while you're still learning your craft. That's true. And then when you finally do learn your craft, it's sort of like being a doctor. You put in all those years and borrow money and sweat and slave to get your MD degree, and then after you have the degree, then your your earning potential is pretty good. And right now, Lenore's you know at, in the early part of the curve, and I'm you know in the later part of the curve. With the and, established family practice. Yeah, so it's nice. Maybe our income streams will overlap like that too. Let's hope. <laughs> As I'm on a decline, Lenore will be at her peak. We're hoping anyway. <laughs> if somebody out there is, is contemplating or in the midst of writing a novel, is there a certain procedure that somebody needs to undertake to begin the act of writing? Is it as easy as picking up a pencil and starting to jot notes, or as you composed your book, Black River, you did it in a car in your head? It was a story in I your head. I did it in a, in, a, in a car in my head until I couldn't contain it all in there anymore, and it was sort of spilling out my ears, and then I had to make notes. Um, I, I think it begins differently. For I mean, different when there's people. the inspiration for the story, which you could carry around in your head for you know your whole lifetime, for that matter. Um, but I think it, it it begins with I think it begins when you sit down, you know, whether it's in the car or in a in a chair at a desk, and begin. And and that's the point that a lot of people, the people who say, you know, oh, I want to write a novel, I've got this story, never get to that point. I think that's when it begins when you actually sit down with the idea that I, you know, you're going to write a book, and then you actually start. Because I could have driven around, I could still be driving around in a car telling myself stories and never have written one of them down. Um, I think it begins when you actually sit down and, and, and you make that commitment, you know, whether you say it out yeah. loud or not. I imagine there's a different point for different people. Depending yeah, on it's what kind of hard to answer because I, I think it's different for every writer. Well, what prompted you to start writing, David? Well, there's a lot of fear um, when you first uh, commit yourself to succeeding as a writer. People, a lot of people want to be writers, but they're afraid of putting themselves to the test because because, well, you see why. You could fail. Yeah, you could fail. And um, so the way I approached that was to, um, to never let anyone see my first novel. I wrote huh. it with the idea that no one would ever see it, and no one ever has seen it, and no one ever will see it. Ever? Never, no. That's how I removed all the fear. I just wanted to see if I could write 60,000 words and have all the words be different and uh, have it form something more or less like a coherent narrative. I'm not saying it was a good book, but by the time I was done, I knew that it was fun, that I could do it, 
and I could write books. Yeah, then knowing you could do it takes away a lot of the worry, mm -hmm. the anxiety about, oh, well, maybe yeah. I can't do this. Then the next one can be for, for general for real. public. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah, the next one was for real, was and the next one sold. Yeah. Why are you moving into the realms now of, how did you phrase it, a historical thriller? Oh, I don't really know. Um, I just... Uh, Seems like fun and such a departure, you know? Yeah, well, um, I have problems with, uh, you know, publishers occasionally because of that, because I write what I want to write and not really necessarily what um, I should write according to the market. Wow. But I think if I can't write what I want to write, then maybe I'm not in the right business. So, so uh, occasionally I'm willing to, to say, hey, I'm willing to take the lumps and take the risk of not selling the book and it was not an easy book to place because it was so different from the sea novels and right and you do tend to get typed books. stereotyped yes. as to what but you still write. you've got those military aspects going through it it should appeal to to the same people that read your earlier books in just kind of a different way well that's the way i pitched it to my publisher and um and they still didn't go for it but another publisher did how about that it must be tough switching from publisher to publisher. It's like well, losing he's, he's a family got two, member. no he's got two publishers now instead of so you yeah. just kind of swap back and forth yeah. between them well, something like that. <laughs> Are you going to go for three books in this series as well? You seem to... No, I don't think so. That The historical novel may be a one-off unless something else occurs to me. Uh, so I am just going to do the three series and then probably... I'm, I'm vaguely planning some large projects after that, but I'm not at the point where I'm ready to put anything on paper and take it to the market yet. Yeah, that is... Take it out and try to sell it. Has the birth of your daughter really changed things for you, the way that you work together? I mean, I know that it's changed the way that you are. I mean, now yeah. you're, you're, you're a family. You're all of a sudden three instead of two. But in the way that you create and that you, you do your craft. Well, I think, um, I mean, we, like you said, we have the same changes anyone does when they, when they first start a family. Um, I think in some ways it, it's helped. I have different insight. I wrote, I mean, my first novel, I wrote a, a story about a young mother uh, who's widowed and has a daughter. And I did that because I had always wanted to have a daughter. And but now I think it might be different if I wrote it now that I have the practical experience. I think it gives you um, an even greater experience to draw from. And it's been pretty positive. I mean, you know, there 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 are some problems. You know, if we don't have a sitter, it's like, well, who's going to watch the baby? You know, I need to write. Well, so do I. You know, we have those negotiations like anybody else. But um, on the whole, it's been positive, and I think it's it's uh, added depth to things because it gives you more. You know, it's like almost like when I want to put it research. I guess it's given you sort of inadvertently research, and now I know what it's like to have a child. I can write about you know it's something else to write about. And and for writers, you know, everything's material. So you know, I think it's all been positive, really. Yes, like the the scene in the passage where the Cuban woman is giving birth to the <laughs> child in the in the boat during the storm and oh yeah he was there yeah he was in the livery room so he could draw on his his actual experience to write that scene <laughs> i didn't want to read it <laughs> next time bring a video camera yes. you know <laughs> just just tell me about it i don't want to read that one but oh, that's but yeah he actually drew on that that actual experience to do that do you think so. it's going to change your writing style any maybe kind of soften you up make you do more maybe swiss family robinson would be next on your list creating something uh, i don't know more softer well, I noticed you have more mention of uh, the child in the yeah. Navy book. It pops up more, I think, now. Does I don't she? know if that has something to do with that or not. Some yeah. kind of subconscious yeah. fatherhood yeah, thing. Yeah. Maybe so. Yeah, I think, I think it must. Well, you know, my uh, Dan in the Navy books had a daughter because I always wanted a daughter, and now I got one. Yeah, that's what happened. We, we kept writing about these daughters, and then, <laughs> and lo and behold, it, it, had, it happened. <laughs> we have a, a couple, up. couple minutes left. Do you have any final wor words you'd like to say for aspiring writers out there? Because I know they're taking notes. Mm -hmm. Advice to aspiring writers? Okay. Advice to aspiring writers? You have writers. to have a thick skin. Um, you have to be able to deal with rejection on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, you have to join a workshop, and you have to work with other writers. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be a perfectionist. Uh, you have to have, you know, not give up easily. Uh, and uh, but bottom line is it's fun and we wouldn't be doing it if it if we didn't have some sense that that's what we were here to do and be open to, to new ideas I yeah. a lot of people I think shut them out before they give them a chance so is it worthwhile being married to another author that would be step number so. one First as long of all, as, as, long as you don't mind your life being material I think it's fine <laughs> 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 probably not good for a real introvert but <laughs> terrific well we'll be looking forward to hearing from Naya Poyer. And mm -hmm. next oh, step. 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, y'all, for joining us on Writer to Writer. We appreciate thank it. Thank you, Dave. And thank you for joining us on Writer to Writer, presented by the Florida Community College at Jacksonville. We'll see you next time.